some Chinese they worship CNN a lot ten years ago. Not anymore now, because Trump. Because of Trump, Trump is yelling CNN fake news every day. Welcome to Overlap, brought to you by Breakthrough News and Wave Media. My name is Lee Camp. I'm the former host of the TV show Redacted Tonight and the current host of Dangerous Ideas and the most censored comedian in America. Overlap is a global conversation show with rotating hosts that is based on a simple concept. While U.S. elites are working to build a new Cold War with China, this show seeks to do the opposite and show how much we all have in common. So I'm excited to be joined by Zephyr, a content creator on YouTube and the popular Chinese social media site Bili Bili. Welcome to the show, Zeph. Thanks, Lee. The audience in U.S. Yes, it's it's excited to do this. Another unique aspect of this show is that it it kind of has no host or it has two hosts. So uh, you know we'll we'll just go back and forth, uh, chatting with each other about the the topic at hand, which is the indictment of Trump and his allies, his co-conspirators. Um, former President Donald Trump is among the indicted, marking his fourth indictment. You know, if he gets another one, I think he gets something free, you know, free free car or something. He and 18 others are charged under Georgia's Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organization Act, RICO, asserting that they worked together towards a common criminal goal. And for those of us here in the United States, when we hear RICO, we usually think of the mafia. That's usually what was used to charge many mafia members. The indictment outlines various attempts to reverse the election results, including spreading false claims of election fraud and submitting fake pro-Trump electors to Congress. So to uh, to get started, I'll, I'll throw a question to you, Zeph. Um, how, how was the Trump presidency, how did it change China's views on America or your average Chinese citizen's views of America? Well, interesting question, because a lot of Chinese possibly they think Trump is the most interesting U.S. president throughout history. Uh, frankly, the four indictment, uh, possibly Georgia is the least interesting one, the most interesting the FBI secret <laughs> file one, right? The, the, uh, hush money, out, like, the hush money for the prostitute was more interesting? Oh, uh, well, possibly. But to Chinese audience, they're very shocked to learn that they put actually top secret U.S. national defense file next to bathtub or toilet or, or stage <laughs> next to his bed. So everybody was like, what? <laughs> and learning that actually from the Times, right? Uh, his um, fans visiting in Mar-a-Lago and Trump was like, hey, come on and see some top secret file. And people were come like, come check out what I got in my bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everything is, is appalling, right? But in a in a good way, it's entertaining for foreigners. So it's the first time people learn that a government, U.S. president, actually hide top secret files in bathtub. You rarely see this, right? So it's interesting and entertaining. Yeah, that, that's fascinating. You say this this latest indictment is the least interesting, which I understand, but it's also, in my view, and a lot of legal scholars' view, the most significant because the other ones. The, the top secret documents, I mean, the thing is the U.S. marks everything top secret. So they later found documents in Biden's residence, documents in Pence's residence. So apparently this is quite common that these presidents and vice presidents don't know what they're doing and they're taking home classified documents. Now, Trump took it to a new level because he was actively trying to hide them, which is a different thing. Uh, but then the, the hush money for the prostitute or for the porn star or whatever you want to call her uh that yeah it, it's fascinating to learn about but it's most people believe it's not actually illegal like you can pay someone not to talk it's generally not considered illegal so they had to do all kinds of legal gymnastics to make that illegal uh so this latest one though seems to be actually legitimate where he and several others worked very hard to put forward a competing group of electors. Now, the system in the U.S. is very complicated. The whole elector system is anti-democratic. I mean, it was put in place by the rich white guys who founded the United States so that they could make sure the American people didn't always get what they want. You know, if the American people voted for something they didn't like, they could undo it. 
Um, so the electric system is so complicated, but legally it seems you cannot create a fake group of electors, say that they count as real, and then put forward documents saying they're real. And so this one actually seems more legit than the others. Uh, but I will also throw in here that something our media won't talk to Americans about, which is that our democratic process is rigged and corrupt throughout the process in many ways. The number one way being money. Uh, you, you can buy an election in the United States and $16 billion was spent on the last midterm election to buy all of these elections. Uh, Money is important. Media is a huge factor of it. Trump gets loads of free media, which is why he got elected in the first place. Um, so there's a lot of ways it's rigged. There's many others as well, gerrymandering and all this complicated stuff. But so, yes, Trump did this, but I think people are ignoring the fact of how our elections are rigged throughout the election process, which to me kind of dilutes how uh, how evil this makes Trump. I mean, I, I find the man detestable, but you're right that a lot of this is pretty funny. <laughs> well, to me, a lot of fragmented issues are funny. Uh, for example, the Georgia case, right? The prosecutor sent how much? I think it's 11.5 million pages files to the Trump law team. Do you know that? Yeah, I don't. Know, I don't know the number. But... I think they possibly run through a ChatGPT or something. And I, I would assume they actually said in ChatGPT, oh, this is for some law stuff and make it unreadable for other ChatGPT software. Just so when the Republicans, the Trump law team, trying to use ChatGPT, speed up their reading, and they couldn't do it, right? <laughs> well, that, that's the other thing is our legal scholars, our lawyers will use all kinds of tricks like that. Another one they'll use is they'll keep pretending the trial is going to happen so that all the lawyers and everyone has to fly down to Georgia and they all show up and then they go, oh, no, we're going to postpone it. And then they all have to fly back home and... It's a gimmick used to just tire people out. They spend tons of money. It's it's all of ridiculous. Um, but I wanted to ask you, do you think your average Chinese person viewed the, the, the elections in the United States as like fully legitimate and democratic before Donald Trump and now they have questions? Trump is in a way a very major phenomenon to make the paramount of U.S. as somewhat a symbol for democracy in the world less holy in my mind but if we look at the train of history going the past 10 years i can say trump is not the, the big stuff right here there is reason why people don't think us is, is symbolizing whatever democracy or freedom liberty anymore so a lot of people hate trump think he broke the rule or whatever but if you look at the trend people just don't think us is um that free anymore yeah, yeah that, that's absolutely true that that Trump kind of revealed something that was going on for a long time. And the U.S. has been cooing other governments, other nations uh, in a bunch of different ways, sometimes outright assassination, but sometimes economically or or other ways uh, for years and years. Trump, you know, that didn't start or end during Donald Trump. So I think you're right that he kind of revealed something that's been going on a long time in terms of of corruption of officials if an official is corrupt in china are there are there methods to to stop them from being a, a government official and and how how good are those methods well i think um most commonly it will be public reporting to somewhat committees and they'll do a fully very strict and formal inquiry to find out whether he is you know, corrupted or not. This is very common right now because a lot of uh, these people got money and due to the party principle, they cannot use their money to um, exchange foreign currencies. So go to US, go to Europe, go to uh, casinos. Um, you know, so they have to use their money in China. At that time, when they use the uh, money that much, his income or her income does not pair with their um, buying then people will report to somewhat committees saying, oh, this guy seems suspicious or she looks suspicious. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned the income because in the US, the 
when officials get into the U.S. government, they suddenly become far richer. Uh, someone was pointing out that Nancy Pelosi it had, is worth like $100 million. But if, she, if you were to take the amount she makes from government, she would only have, you know, like $8 million over her entire career. So, you know, we've seen this again and again, that being a government official in the United States allows you access to stock information so that you can then uh, basically do insider trading on Wall Street, whether it's always called that or not. That's some public secret, but my audience are shocking to learn that uh, Nancy Pelosi's husband called DUI, right, and rode in a cra car crash and showed a what a permanent whatever police friendship card, <laughs> right? This kind of stuff is very popular on Twitter. I checked like for 1,200 something posting, they have inferior or superior friendship card than their friends. It's some whatever, I don't know, like a party, party show maker, showcase. I have a superior friendship card with some policeman, a higher ranked policeman in the, um, in the neighborhood, right? And uh, Adams, the New York mayor, friend is t uh, saying to a um, senior officer that uh, someone showing a friendship card with him, you must let him pass, right? The DUI, whatever, I don't care. And the guy was like, there is this thing called integrity, right? He went on New York Times to say there is this thing called integ integrity. Not because he's that much of integrity, but in, in the weekend, say, neighborhood, everybody got a friendship card. All kinds of friendship cover with this policeman, with that policewoman, just those superior got the captain saying, you must let them pass. And the guy is like, no, one day he was not in best temper or whatever. No, I'm not letting this. And the captain was like, okay, you're moving to the night patrol. <laughs> A police VIP, right? I hadn't heard of the uh, friendship cards, but I know that a lot of people that are part of the police fraternity or connected to it they'll put the stickers on the back of their cars and and that type of thing and then police generally won't pull over someone with the the police fraternity sticker on their car and things like that so there's a lot of favoritism absolutely do you think people in china china think that trump will end up in prison or that he could win the presidency again or i look into all these four cases deeply and uh, I do shows, explanatory shows to my audience explaining why he can still get elected and even in prison, right? When CPUSA, actually not CPUSA, but the so so Society Social Party of America, right, got elected in prison. And that time my audience are like, okay, so this guy can still get elected in prison. And people in China or in the majority in the world countries, jail or other facilities is somewhat judicial and very formal, right? But they're very shocking to learn that in US, some prison are listed companies and government would go to some prison like, oh, we're, we're hosting less prisoners, inmates than before. We need more prisoners. <laughs> yeah, corporate. <laughs> California yeah. government, right? $1 per hour and you go fire extinguishing out there. So it's, yeah, that's somewhere very shocking to learn. Yeah, I, there definitely are different different types of prisons in the u.s uh yeah, yeah you're talking about the for-profit prisons where they're the states are obligated to have a certain number of people in prison and by the contract but also there can be favoritism in terms of prison sentences um the, one of the best examples is jeffrey epstein that everyone now knows about when he was first convicted of uh pedophilia or whatever the charge actually was they ultimately sentenced him to a certain to like a year or something, but he was allowed to leave prison to go to his office. So he was showing up for prison for a few hours, then going to go to work and then got like, it's just ridiculous. So in the United States, you can run for office if you've, even if you've been convicted, uh, some states, they're saying some states may stop him, may try and pass something to stop him from getting on the ballot if he has been convicted, but constitutionally it's seen and, and you know, legal scholars debate on some of this, but it seems there's nothing that could stop that, that would necessarily stop him from being elected president in prison or from prison. So, or even while, or while his trial is going on or something like that. So it's a big question mark as to, even if this goes through as to whether it would stop Trump from winning. Well, the, Important problem here is I went through several articles from Harvard University professors talking on 
uh, WAPO arguing whether it's possible the Georgia, because it's state uh, felony, right? Uh, let's say Trump got uh, sentenced to the Georgia state prison and stayed in prison, he got elected. Is that possible that those foreign leaders go to that prison and meet Trump? Or is it possible, you know, like Epstein, he can make his home, home like a prison, right? And <laughs> so how about make White House a prison? And make all the USSS, right? The security services, you know, in, in the prison and there's this state police, whatever, looking at him, signing whatever, files, medals, make a press conference, all in, the, all in a cell, right? Just make a big cell. Think about that. What kind of freak show is that? Will he be allowed to have the classified documents in his prison cell? Do people in, do, do Chinese people think there's like a huge difference between the way Joe Biden leads the United States versus Donald Trump? Or do they feel a lot of it is fairly similar, except Trump maybe is funnier? So we actually went through article by article how much Trump was making sure to hurt China, those sanctions and stuff. A question raised is if Joe Biden was elected before he was elected, right? Well, he actually withdraw those stupid sanctions, like 45, uh, 75, what a punishable sanctions. My conclusion was very clear. He would not withdraw anything. And since Joe Biden got elected, actually the truth went out, he didn't withdraw anything. So to me, it seems like, okay, uh, before Joe Biden got elected, every like Democratic Party was like, oh, Trump is out of his mind, he's sanctioning his stupid whatever, drinking bleach. But when Joe Biden got in office, he didn't withdraw anything. So what's the dif difference between you and Trump? You're yelling Trump is stupidly anti-China, but you're doing the same thing, right? You didn't withdraw anything. Orally, okay, you're being nice with China, more wise, more sanity, but actually on hand, I don't see any stuff, right? No, I, th I think you're absolutely right. And it, it's a lot of Americans, though, they believe the words. So they think that Joe Biden is being more rational or more logical with China, but it's the same. It's the same stuff. It's the same Cold War against China. It's the same economic war. And uh and and yeah, and it was Nancy Pelosi that that flew to Taiwan just to try and make things even more heated. So yeah, it's the the idea that that Trump is worse for China. It's it, they're both horrible uh, in terms of having diplomacy and friendship and working together, uh, which is what this world desperately needs. And it's just that the Democrats you know, say nicer things. Frankly, I don't think the Democrat Party is representing democracy in any ways in the US, frankly, because those um, like AOC or Bernie Sanders, they talk about a little bit about socialism and they got really stomped in the US. Nobody was caring what they're saying, like you're an Omar. Nobody care what they say and everybody's isolating them, saying they're freaks and stuff. They're they're not even that socialist. They're, they're not even that socialism, right? They're just raising this term and got demonized like you're a communist they don't even know the difference between communism and socialism like what freak is that that's true like trump telling people to drink bleach everybody's mocking trump but why you're not not, not mocking the democratic party they don't even know the difference between communism and socialism right stupid yeah Just and 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 it's by it's by design they want people confused because they don't want people to actually know what these things are and and what they stand for uh but bernie sanders was hugely popular before they again you know anti-democratically rigged the primaries against bernie sanders they they did everything they could from you know confusing people about polling locations uh, the computers had a lot of question marks around them, changing the ballots, uh, telling everyone in California to fill out what's called a provisional ballot, which is kind of like a fake ballot. Uh, so they did everything they could to, to rig the primaries against Bernie, and, and ultimately they stopped him. But they were very nervous. I think they suppressed the report on um, Bernie Sanders, frankly, because you see Bernie is telling the truth about everything, and he had to go do Guardian. Not any U.S. media, you got to go to a Guardian. So possibly U.S. mainstream media, CNN or whatever, 
that uh, some Chinese they worship CNN a lot ten years ago. Not anymore now, because Trump. Because of Trump, Trump is yelling CNN fake news every day. So right now, CNN China, everybody says CNN, even the. I don't know, like farmers in rural areas, it's seeing oh fake news. I know that fake news, never believe, right? He he made some contribution at least exposing <laughs> CNN or BBC as fake news. That's a good thing, right? We need to recognize that as a good side. But、uh, I think the mainstream media is basically just、uh, wasting huge amount of tremendous public attention, just circulating. Useless informations all day long about something doesn't matter, and to audience that don't care at all. For example, the Florida building collapse, right? That case, and everybody is reporting how they rescue a small kitten, and how the kitten is clean, how the kitten was meowing, everything lovely, adorable. But nobody cares. The rescue team didn't rescue even a single human being, and everybody's like, "Oh, we rescued a cat! Oh, you're hooray!" And this time the Hawaii,、um, Maui fire. I was like, ah, I rescued the other pets. How we help the pets? What about those human beings? What are you guys doing, right? It's circulating all day. How to help pets? What about the men? We care the men and women living there. What about the rebuilding? Joe Biden's like, oh, Zelensky, do you need more money? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This freak show. I don't get it. The grand circus. That's how we view everything going on right now. Okay. Well, you're not wrong.、Uh, the United States sends hundreds of billion dollars to Ukraine for a proxy war、uh, with Russia, and meanwhile, we can't take care of our own citizens. We can't help people in Maui. We can't fix the bridges that are collapsing across the United States. We can't do anything、uh, for average citizens. Sixty-four、uh, percent, I think, of Americans say they live paycheck to paycheck, never sure where their next. Uh, paycheck is going to come from, and and meanwhile we're sending hundreds of billions to Zelensky in Ukraine. So,、uh, yeah, you're you're absolutely right. That's true, and、uh, it's the trending comparing to 50 years ago. A lot of U.S. citizens, when they're doing the poll, say they don't think in the future they can get、uh, this much income comparing to 50 years ago. And for their children, they think the future will be worth. So, American dream. Possibly that's why a lot of I mean, legal or illegal immigrant they、uh, went to America for, but now since even the American they don't think they have a future in America, so that's possibly one reason why they think、um, Trump is something they need and make America great again and stuff. If they think America was ever great in whatever historical area, yeah. To go back to the the main topic here for a moment, Donald Trump,、uh, do you think that? The Republicans, the other Republicans that are running, are they going to? And Republicans, I guess, across America, are they going to back Donald Trump, considering the, the, the multiple indictments of everything? And and does it does it matter in in your view? Man, that's a good question. That's a splendid question. I want to ask you. Yeah, I went through a lot of articles talking. Who else can people elect?、Um, Ron DeSantis. Or in Trump's way, Ron DeSantis, <laughs> he only got like ten or whatever fifteen percent support. He himself think he represent conservative, but banning abortion is not conservative. It's anti-human, right? If you're not electing Trump, how about Ron DeSantis? In the way I think, Ron DeSantis, those、um, slavery makes some slave good, and not allowing any sexual.、Uh, Teaching before primary school, three grade, is anti-human in my point. So if you're not electing Trump, are you guys actually gonna elect Ron DeSantis? If in CNN opinion they anti-Trump this much, possibly they want people to elect Ron DeSantis. So my explanation is possible they think Ron DeSantis cannot win the campaign against Joe Biden. So they want Ron DeSantis to win the primary against Trump, and Joe Biden can easily beat Ron DeSantis when final campaign comes. Um, in that way, possibly, I think other、um, Republicans will support Trump, anyways. Because if it's Trump, there's still hope. If it's Ron DeSantis, people in Seattle, people in I don't know Nebraska, in Maine, they, they possibly don't even know who Ron DeSantis is. There is a guy went on Wapo saying like, "Okay, I'm I'm not a Trump fan. I'm not MAGA. Whatever. I vote for Trump just because I know the guy." Other guys, Mike Pence. Who 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 even know who Mike Pence did? His vice presidency, 
without if you know he's from Indiana, he was a state、uh, governor, right? So if not voting for Trump, who else the Republican, the conservatives will vote? That's the real question. So I'm interested, and my audience are interested. If not voting for Trump, who will the conservatives vote? If consider Ron DeSantis too conservative. I mean, yeah, there's some people are talking about DeSantis. I guess the only other one you hear much about recently is、uh, Ramaswamy, but I, I don't know that much about him. But th- these people all seem like monsters to me. I mean, <laughs> they're all <laughs> they're all a horror show.、Uh, but. A lot of it is this kind of culture war、uh, crap, where it's like we don't like the gender sign on the bathroom. It's just like meaningless dumb stuff that they can bicker over,、uh, and they act like that's everything. When in fact, they should be talking much more about the larger issues of the world. But you know, I guess there's a chance that DeSantis. By the way, DeSantis also oversaw U.S. torture、uh, at I think Guantanamo as a lawyer in in the army. So this is, you know, he's he's a horror show, but he's not nearly as entertaining as Donald Trump. Donald Trump's a far better entertainer. Well, his new opinion is very entertaining, saying the U.S. should send troops to Mexico and exterminate the drug <laughs> drug mafia and stuff. You want to start a war with Mexico? <laughs> That's out of the mind. It's not even like right or left. This guy was a lawyer, even like, how did you get your degree? Like Mall University, you just pay the money and get the degree. Nobody, like, dude, come on, right? I, th- I think I think each one of them is looking for the the most insane position to take so that people will talk about them. You know, so to win some media report, I guess. Yeah, it's the it's the Kanye West strategy. If you seem insane enough, people will talk about you. But、uh, one thing you mentioned though is if the Sa- that the Democrats or the Democratic Party might be kind of pushing for DeSantis because. They think that Biden can beat DeSantis. I don't know what Biden can do. I mean, he can barely speak. He can barely walk. So I don't know. Like, like you put him in a debate, they'll be lucky if he faces the right direction.、Uh, so, getting him to actually speak full sentences, I think, would be very difficult. And I don't know what the Democratic Party's plan is. I mean, some people believe they're going to. Switch out Joe Biden and put in Gavin Newsom or something later in the in the campaign season, but I, I don't actually know. I know they're scared to death of RFK Jr., who、uh, some things he says I like, some things he says he's out of his mind, but、uh, it's all pure insanity. It's a it's a circus. You're right. It's a circus. From what I learned,、uh, Harvard poll last month, seventy percent don't like Biden and sixty five percent they don't like Trump. So basically, they don't like either Trump or Biden, but there is no third choice. That's why possibly Andrew Yang they、uh, get a forward party, I guess, and I think the majority, the middle section, they'll possibly ver- vote for the forward party. But that's not、um, in a way realistic. Yeah, I conclude that is the well-educated middle class. They elevated to the higher class, and they deny or disregard those people living middle class and、uh, uh, sweaty mess. Well, and and something your audience may be interested in is the part of the reason there's no well-known third party in the United States is because they do exist. It's just in, made incredibly difficult for them to get on ballots and to get any media coverage.、Um, Cornell West is a very well-known professor who's running for the Green Party. Uh, a third party, but a getting media coverage is is nearly impossible. But beyond that, just getting on the ballot in each state is incredibly difficult. You need tens of thousands of signatures. You need to spend all this money that a lot of third parties don't have.、Uh, so the the American system is designed to make it nearly impossible for third parties. To get any traction, and and that really is by design. So what I learned from CNN is their viewing rate actually dropped fifty percent. Their target audience after Trump left the office. So to me, it seems like CNN is whatever vampire sucking blood from all kinds of MAGA ideology and reporting on Trump. So in a way, they're enemy, but business wise, possibly they're partners. This is the primary of Fox, right? The same, the same. That is an excellent point, and I've made that point before. Where CNN and MSNBC and many of the U.S. news networks act like Trump is the devil, and and Trump's a detestable human being. But 
At the same time, they're the ones that actually get Trump elected because they gave in the last election, the one he won, they gave him uh, 10 times as much coverage as Hillary Clinton and 16 times as much coverage as Bernie Sanders when Bernie was still in the race. So they give Trump all of this media coverage, just insane amounts of media coverage. And then they go, how did he get elected? How did this happen? All we did was talk about him every minute. So they have themselves to blame, even as they run around and blame people like me and censor me and delete my YouTube channel and stuff like that. They really have themselves to blame if they're upset that Donald Trump got elected. And it's still going on. Like yesterday or the day, the day before, he went back to the X, right, Twitter, and posted his criminal photo on Twitter and got like whatever, 2. Uh, 250 million views on Twitter. And Elon Musk was like, wow, next level. And everybody reporting, WAPL and WSJ be like, oh, there's a phenomenon. And this, this guy's still sucking his blood, right? Still media coverage for Trump. And nobody's care about uh, Joe Biden. Joe Biden sent a campaign post with like 5 million views comparing to Trump, like 250 million. So when they are arguing, de demonizing Trump or MAGA, actually they're helping him to build bigger and earn more money in two days it got like seven millions comparing to what Sandius got in hand only like 12 million so trump actually made 70 percent to send his um election money in just two days think about that also trump sells uh trump sells nfts where he's dressed in a superhero outfit so <laughs> I'm the MAGA king, right? <laughs> Actually, in China, uh, my audience and a lot of netizens, they have this called Trump Huang, which means Trump the king. He himself said, I'm the king, right? MAGA king. And the other says, baby Trump, because everybody think he's uh, um, heard by a Democratic Party, by CNN and stuff. He is kind of hero fighting CNN, exposing how CNN is fake news to the world. Not only Chinese, I met a lot of Indian friends, they, they really worship CNN as a, whatever paramount of the media. And they want to learn from CNN, BBC, and after Trump presidency, everybody's like, oh, forget about that. <laughs> that's great, you know, I think that's, that's a real positive. That, maybe that's the only positive of uh, Donald Trump. So did Trump also, did he make people in China uh, kind of more supportive of of uh, Chinese foreign policy and, and nationalism? Did, did Trump have that impact? So I think attention doesn't necessarily mean support. I um, think a lot of uh, Chinese audience, they learned more about international affairs, how the state is run after Trump presidency, especially after learning about foreign indictment. Before that, people were like, oh, managing the government, how my daily routine is helping the country to be a better place. Everybody was like, okay, some big figures problem is not my problem. The seeing Trump is stirring everything up in the US and people were like, okay, it's my duty to do something for my country. Everybody make together, probably make our country a better place. So in a way, Trump did um, make a lot of Chinese audience more patriotic in a good way. Uh, the other way, possibly they, uh, they got more hatred um, from Trump presidency because they think uh, reporting what the freak show in the US like telling people to drink bleach is somewhat damaging their perfect um, fake US um, homeland fantasy that they have. But possibly these people never been to US and they just fantasize US as somewhat democracy heaven that everybody got honey and milk everywhere you know so reporting anything bad in us is uh, you know damaging their perfect wet dream so it looks like we're we're out of time but zef it's been a pleasure to chat with you thank you for doing this with me thank you lee thank you guys